Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 1 through 7. And I'm titled my message How to Keep Your Heart. Proverbs chapter 16, we'll begin reading in verse 1. The Bible says, The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in the heart is abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, again, Lord, we thank you for your word and its guidance in our lives. And Lord, I pray you'd help each and every one of us to apply this simple truth to our hearts this evening. And Lord, that you do that work in our lives only you can do. Lord, I pray you give me the words and wisdom to preach thus saith the Lord. And Lord, I pray that in each and every aspect of this message you be glorified. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. In verse 3, the Bible says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. I'm going to read some verses, and then I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to explain how to keep your heart, what it means to keep your heart. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 2, I beseech you, Odeus, I beseech Synth, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I treat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord alway, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 26, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's heart failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. When it comes to our heart, there are many things that play a part. When it comes to our lives, there are many things that determine who we're going to be. But for the Christian, what will determine what we're going to be and who we're going to be is where is our minds at? What are we thinking about? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there and day and night. For if we do that, the Bible says our ways will become prosperous, we'll have good success. If we focus and put our minds where they belong, it will change our hearts. A lot of people think that things are, we sometimes get caught up in the idea that one day we'll wake up and serve the Lord. One day we'll get things right with God and we'll do what we ought to do. And you know what I mean by that. Sometimes we have this mindset where things will just fall into place and I'll be the Christian I'm supposed to be. But the Bible says we're to commit our works unto the Lord and all our thoughts shall be established. And what God's word is teaching is it begins with doing what you know you're supposed to do. Doing what God's word tells you to do. And your thoughts will follow, fall in line. When you look at life in the right way and you don't follow your feelings, you don't follow your emotions, but you follow the word of truth, you follow what God says to do, your thoughts and feelings will fall into place. As we think about following the Lord and keeping our heart, we must understand that the keeping of our heart comes into place when we do what God tells us to do. And we obey his word. What will keep your heart and mind in these days can't be found in your heart. We have to remember that. All that is evil, our sinful nature, that comes from within, out of the heart of man. 
our, our, our desire to turn away from God, our desire to do wrong, our desire to go the wrong way and do what is wrong comes from within. And in order for us to do what is right, we have to make a commitment, a commitment unto the Lord, a commitment, a decision that we're going to do what God tells us to do. Uh, we know the verse from the Old Testament where it speaks of how long halt ye between two opinions, that the Lord be God, serve him. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord's service in the work of the Lord is not going to happen by accident. It's not going to happen just because one day you're going to wake up and decide you're going to serve the Lord. It's going to happen by commitments. And commitment not to friends, not to family. Commitments unto the Lord. Understanding who it is that we serve and what he has done for us and why we're here and why we gather together to worship. When we come to church, it's not just something we do just to do. We do it out of our heart of gratitude for what he has done for us. Understanding that without him, we are nothing. We are who we are. We, our, our, our very being, the ability to do what we do is found in the Lord Jesus Christ as Christians. We must all realize as Christians that we have a calling. And we should serve the one who has bought us and not ourselves. Many a Christian is falling away from the faith, and this is not because they cannot make it. I do not believe for one second that in any Christian's life there are Christians who will make it and there are Christians who will not make it. I believe there are people who choose to follow the Lord and those who made a choice not to. And I'll explain what I mean to that. Turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll begin reading in verse number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we'll begin reading in verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters, as, some of, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But well with the temptation, make a way of, to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The Bible makes it very clear that there is no temptation taken to you but such is common to men. God's word says when you fall into certain sins, it wasn't that you could not stand. It is you made a choice. God makes a way of escape. God makes a way to flee. He says, wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. The decisions we make in life will determine what we do. They'll determine what we think. What we're doing right now will determine what I'm going to think tomorrow. Where I'm at right now will determine what I'm going to think for the rest of this week. The things that we allow into our heart, the practice and where we invest our time 
will determine what our hearts are going to be like. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We think of treasure as money, but one of the most precious treasures that we have is the time that God gives us each and every day. And where we invest that time will determine where we're going to be tomorrow and the day after that. Because it will establish our thought process. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thought shall be established. It's very important for us to realize how important our thought life is. And we'll learn that as we go through this, this evening. The sin or practice, the struggle you struggle with, or whatever it is we struggle with, we must remember that we're all frail beings, that we will fail or falter. But it's never an excuse to fail or falter because we know we're sinners. No temptation has taken us such as common man. Do your best. When you fall, get back up and move on. Move forward. Do what is right. Commit thy works unto the Lord. When one gets involved in the work of the Lord and one tastes and sees that the good the goodness of God because they're being faithful to God and God is blessing their life because they are being faithful and encourages their hearts. It helps them to continue on following God because they see God answering prayers in their life. They see God working in their steps in their life. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord in order for you to be that man that God orders your steps. You have to be a person who has given themselves over to the work of the Lord. A person who's decided, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. What we need to do today as Christians in order to be established is first we must understand what it means to be committed. What does it mean to be committed? And then when we understand what it means to be committed, then we need to commit our works unto the Lord. And then when we do that, the Bible says our thoughts shall be established. Our, our hearts will be where they need to be. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You do what you think. You act upon what you're thinking. Actions follow thoughts. And we need to have our thoughts in the right place. And the Bible says to have our thoughts in the right place, we have to commit our works unto the Lord. And our thoughts will be established. Out of the abundance of the heart, the most speaketh, and the way we live our lives is based upon what we put in our hearts. But in order for us to have our hearts established, we first must understand what commitment is. What is commitment? What is commitment? The Bible says we're to commit our works unto the Lord. What is commitment? Commitment is service. It is what drives you from day to day. It is a choice. The definition of commitment is an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom, restricts freedom of action. The state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or activity. Our dedication or our commitment should be unto the Lord. It should restrict us and our freedoms from doing certain things. We don't walk like the world. We don't talk like the world because of commitments we've made. We don't give up on the things of God and do whatever we feel like doing because of commitments we have made. Our commitment is to God out of a heart of love. And that's where it needs to come from. Understanding what it is that he has done for us. The Bible says we are not our own. We're bought with a price. Therefore, we're to glorify God in our bodies. We are bought with a price. We are not our own. We are to do what God wants us to do. When we think of commitment in the Bible, there are many people we think of. We think of Peter. He was committed. We think of the prophets and how they were willing to do what they needed to do and following God. They were committed. But there's also another man who was committed. A man who loved the Lord. His name was John. Turn your Bibles to the book of John chapter 19. John chapter 19.
And we'll begin reading in verse 25, John chapter 19. And verse 25. The Bible says in John chapter 19, verse 25, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her unto his own home. John was a committed disciple. His commitment was seen in the fact that he followed Jesus to the cross. And while Jesus was dying on the cross, when John was standing there, he gave John some responsibility. He said, you take care of my mother. But what brought him to that place in the first place? He was a committed follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where Jesus would go, he was going to follow. He was willing to follow him to that place. He was willing to go there because he had dedicated his life to following someone. And the one he had dedicated his life to following was the Lord Jesus Christ. His desire was to follow Jesus. I'm going to read from another passage of scripture. You don't have to turn there. John chapter 20 and beginning of verse 1, the Bible says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. John outran Peter when he heard about what was going on, that Jesus wasn't out the grave. John was involved in many parts of Jesus' life. He was committed. And his commitment was shown in his life because of where he was at, what he was doing. He wanted to be where Jesus was at. He wanted to see what was going on, what was occurring. He was involved and he did what he did because he had dedicated his life to following the Lord Jesus Christ. John was not a perfect man, however. The Bible says in Mark 16, 14, after he appeared unto eleven as they sat at meat, the Bible says, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. What I say that for is this. When it comes to commitment, we understand that we're but flesh. We'll do our best, but we won't be perfect. And sometimes the Lord's going to upbraid us. The Lord's going to work in our hearts, and he's going to say, this is what you need to do better. This is what you need to do in order to be changed, to be more committed in following me. And we have to be willing to listen. Commitment simply means this. It means to be dedicated, set apart. And for Christians, our dedication ought to be to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be committed unto the Lord. So as we understand what commitment means, the Bible says we are to commit our works unto the Lord. To be committed is to be dedicated. But when it comes to committing our works unto the Lord, it means what we do is of utmost importance. Even when it comes to preaching the gospel, people do it for many reasons. Some people are not committed when they preach the gospel. The Bible says the following in Philippians chapter 1, verse 13 and following. Turn there if you would. The book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 1 
And we'll begin reading in verse 13. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 13, the Bible says, So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. When it comes to commitment, our commitment needs to be out of love, out of a desire to please him. Some people get involved and they do even the preaching of the gospel. Some do it out of false pretense. Others do it for financial gain, whatever reason. But our desire, our motivation ought to be out of a love for the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. As it comes to committing our works unto the Lord, what motivates us should be what Jesus did for us. What keeps us going needs to be knowing what God has done in our lives. The Bible says the following when it comes to committing our works to him or why we serve him. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 3, For considered him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. When we consider him and see his love and what he has done for us, it should motivate us to do what we need to do for him. The sacrifices that we make, the things that we do, ought to be out of a heart of love for the Lord Jesus. The Bible says the following, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us the glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and the virtue, knowledge, and the knowledge, temperance, and the temperance, patience, and the patience, godliness, and the godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the presence, present truth. The Bible says, if you do these things, you shall never fall. You commit your works unto the Lord. You do what God tells you to do. If you're involved in the work that the Lord has given to you, if you remain faithful, your thoughts will become established, and you will never fall. That is a promise from the word of God. If you're faithful in the work and doing more as God shows you more and being more faithful as he, he shows you when you're faithful and you do your part, how faithful he is and how he'll never leave you or nor forsake you, the more you become involved, you'll see then understand that God is there to take care of me. He's done so much for me. And this is only possible, of course, if you are committed You've committed your works unto the Lord. You've given your life over to the Lord. You're, you're doing what you know you're supposed to do. And the result is, finally, and all be done, a life committed to God will establish your heart. The Bible says your thoughts will be established. And when our minds or our thoughts are established, our hearts will be established. Commitment 
is not enough. Committed unto works is not enough. Committed our works unto the Lord is what we need to do. Many people are committed. Many people are busy at work, but they haven't committed the works unto the Lord. They haven't given of what God has given to them or in their lives. They have not given everything over unto the Lord as to why they do what they do. They've become involved for reasons as to keep up a show so that they are ashamed amongst their peers. They become involved because this is why they've always done what they've done and it's just a matter of tradition. But we need to commit our works unto the Lord. We're going to do what we're due for the Lord's sake. Knowing that it's Jesus that we serve. Knowing it is God that we are serving. When one commits his works unto the Lord, the thoughts will follow suit. The mind will see and know and testify to the one who follows the Lord in his life that he is faithful. What I mean by that, when you are faithful to the things of God, you'll see that God is faithful in your life. You'll see answers to prayers. You'll see the answers according to as God has promised in your, his, you in his word. You'll see God take care of you. When you've given your life to serve him where he wants you to serve him, he takes care of everything else. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. You don't have to worry about shelter or clothing. You don't have to take think of these things. God takes care of those things. You don't have to think about what will tomorrow hold. What is going to happen in this world? The world is falling apart because God will take care of those things. You say, how do you know that? Because when you committed yourself to the Lord, you saw him to be true. You saw him take care of you each and every step of the way. And he'll do it again. Your thoughts will know and your heart will know that God will do what he says he'll do. He'll take care of you. When one gives himself to the Lord and enjoys the fruits of being used by the Lord, his heart's desire is to be continued to be used by the Lord even more. The Bible says the following in Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 13. Turn there if you would. Isaiah chapter 58 And verse 13, Isaiah 58 and verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee a ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. God says when you stop following what you want to do, you commit your life to him, then the Bible says you'll delight yourself in the Lord. Those who delight in the Lord are those who have decided that they're going to commit their lives to him in service and obey God and all that he says. Your thoughts, well, the Bible says, will be a, in a place where they'll want to pray, praise him and serve him even more. For this to happen, one must understand the importance of not doing what they want to do. There are so many things that try to grab our attention. The world, our flesh, the devil, and all tries to pull us away from serving God. We just have to remain committed to serving him. Turn the, your Bibles to Psalm chapter 37. Psalm chapter 37. And I'll begin reading in verse 3. Psalm chapter 37. And I'll begin reading in verse 3. The Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 3, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. When you delight yourself in the Lord, he's not saying he's going to give you whatever you want. He's saying he'll give you the desires of your heart. Your thoughts will be what they need to be. You'll have that heart desire to praise him and to serve him. 
Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that the righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the day knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever they shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the lord shall be as the fat of lambs they shall consume into smoke shall they consume away the wicked boreth and payeth not again but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth for such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spray himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them, because they trust. In him we have all a desire to do what we ought to do and those who desire rightly those who desire to follow the Lord and they trust in the Lord they'll get to see God's blessings in their life he said I I am young now I have, I'm old it says in the Psalms but I've never seen the righteous forsaken that person who says I've given my life to God I'm going to serve him at the end of these days he'll be filled with joy the people that forsake God, that turn their back on God, they'll not have that joy. But those who remain faithful, those that commit themselves unto God, will see God do great and mighty things. And it's not because of who they are or what they do. It's because when they commit their works unto the Lord and their thoughts are established, they get to see what God will do in their life if they give their heart to God. You want to keep your heart Simply give it over to the Lord.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, Lord, we thank you for all that you do in our